Welcome to Whole Fit Talks. This is a show just for you, someone who's taking ownership of their health, leading their life, and living their legacy. And I'm glad we found each other because I am another you. Thanks for being here. And now on to this week's episode. These are somewhat unsettling times right now. And I wanted to provide an opportunity for us to come together and to leave feeling a little better around things that are very much within our control. So I've titled this conversation, How to Not Be a Good Host. Uh, and this is not something that you're going to find through searching for the virus online, okay? This is, uh, this is certainly a conversation you're going to leave with practical information on what you can do for yourself and for your family and for each other. Uh, but I want to give you some, some really practical advice right now. We are in such an unsettling time. A lot of us are feeling just that, you know inevitable chaos when it comes to our schedules, things are changing fast. I mean, with a deep breath, I share, you know, I'm very much in that with you. This has been a stressful last week over here. I, I know a lot of you listening were also impacted by some cancellations that happened. So um, last uh, this week, we were supposed to be heading to Arizona for our doTERRA leadership retreat. We had over 4,000 of our high level leaders plan to go. I mean, last week at this time, I was, I had just finished preparing the, um, the last bit of content for my topic of a workshop I was supposed to be giving called Life by Design. So, uh, oh, the irony there, right? <laughs> I had shirts printed, we had lunch plans and dinner plans and different meetups for that cherished FaceTime. And all of it was canceled. Literally within hours of of us scheduled to fly in and, and actually there were quite a few that had already flown in for this event, just poof, you know, canceled. And, and it was for sure the right thing to do. There were many events that were canceled in the last week. I mean, um, some of you know of the conference South by Southwest, it draws close to 400,000 people. Uh, I believe it's in Austin. They canceled. Tony Robbins had to cancel for the first time ever. The NBA just announced that there's their season's done. Uh, there's a lot of schools that are, are canceling right now. Uh, this is all even prior to the World Health Organization announcing this virus as a global pandemic yesterday. So, I mean, regardless of what we believe is going on right now with this virus, the reality is it's going to change the way that we carry on for the next few months. Within minutes, like minutes, it seemed that toilet paper, rubbing alcohol, hand sanitizer, things like that were wiped off of the shelves. I mean, even in doTERRA, many of our um, favorite immune support products are out of stock on the, the, the on guard line. I mean, every day we're getting updates now of limits and caps and several of those items out of stock. Um, yesterday, I posted to our essential oil community uh, an effective DIY hand sanitizer. I'm going to share that recipe with you guys here in a few minutes. Um, but just after I was reading through the CDC's website and looking at recommendations of what actually makes a sanitizer effective, uh, they, they've put out a warning. You know, if you're making sanitizers, you need to make sure that it has at least a 60% volume of, of alcohol, rubbing alcohol, ethyl alcohol. Um, and they've been putting out these warnings because a lot of people are making their own sanitizers, right? Because all of the shelves are depleted. So I was reading through the website, I put together a recipe for my, my community only to discover literally within, you know, moments later, I hop over to Amazon to link up the appropriate rubbing alcohol for people and it's completely sold out or there's bottles on there now that were, you know, $5 a couple days ago that are now selling for $30. So we're seeing things evolve so quickly. And I mean, if it's not within the spread of the virus itself, it's certainly within our access to products and within our scheduled plans, things are changing and fear 
is moving really fast. And so it can feel overwhelming, right? I, I just want to acknowledge that as we open up with this because I know I have felt overwhelmed these last few days just dealing with the, the ripple effect. I know so many of you, I, I, I don't think anybody listening to this hasn't felt it in some way uh, where you're having to just make a lot of quick changes, right? So if you're feeling that, if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling even fear and afraid, you're not alone. An event, an event like this can, can really feel like the rug's been ripped out from underneath you, right? And I mean, I, oof, I feel for what's to come. I feel for families who uh, don't have some sort of residual income integrated into their, their, their earnings right now because as schools change their plans, as kids will be forced to stay home, parents are gonna be relying on the support around them to continue to be able to work. We have healthcare workers and first responders, they, they're needing extra immune reinforcements right now so that they stay strong because they're going to be more needed than ever before. I mean, this is impacting, the ripple effect is being felt. And I mean, there, there's a lot of theories going around right now. There's, a, there's theories that this is all a farce and there's a political and vaccine agenda backbone to it. Um, you know, you might see those memes flying around, right? The, the same people that sell the panic, sell the pill. So there's kind of, there's people hanging out in that camp. There are theories that all of this panic is ridiculous and that there's nothing to be worried about when we compare um, the current death rates to the death rates that we currently have with uh, cancer and overdoses and, and car accidents, right? In, in comparison, perhaps the, the rate of impact of this virus it seems ridiculous to some people that there's so much concern around this when we have all of these other global issues. Um, there are theories that this is bio-warfare. There's theories that this virus is spreading so fast because of um, areas around the world that have recently installed 5G. And to be honest, you guys, I've, I've held all of those theories in the past few weeks I, I could see a lot of things bubbling up towards um, a new coronavirus, uh, a new corona vaccine coming, coronavirus vaccine, that's what I meant to say. Um, I saw that coming a mile away. I mean, they've, they've just released that, so you can actually roll up your sleeve and be paid to test out this new vaccine. I mean, the point is, we, we all know how effective it is to sell fear. It's a great motiv motivator when it comes to buying, when it comes to voting, right? Um, this is why we're also seeing a lot of companies preying on this fear and marketing a lot of their products as a cure. Um, the FTC and the FDA already have a list of, of companies that have violated that. And so while fear is much like a virus, we do have an actual virus that is spreading quickly. The numbers seem to be doubling with every day, right? So what we've seen up till now is not, this is just the beginning, right? As, as they look at projections. So where we need to come together right now is in a place of understanding that each of us have a responsibility. Regardless of what theory we hold, we have a responsibility to do what we can. And there is a cost to waiting. Um, a virus doesn't discriminate, right? So just because you may hold a theory, just because I may hold a theory, uh, it doesn't mean that that's going to stop it from spreading, right? We, we all have to look at the part that we can play in this with first taking radical ownership on an individual level, knowing that that affects the whole, right? So this is what I wanted to talk about together today. How can we strike that balance between being informed and prepared, but not letting it completely consume us? How can we uh, come back to a state of power and calmness and presence while the world is currently spinning? And what is this whole thing here to teach us? Is this an invitation 
for us to look within, to look at the things that we've been trusting up until now, to look at our current system, to look at the, the things that we have placed all of our faith in and to understand that maybe there's a bit of a shakeup happening for a reason right now so that we can all look at what we can learn and what we can do different and how we can take more ownership. Because that is the gift within times like this. There, there's an opportunity we have to go left when everyone else is going right, right? To be calm, to be ready for anything. That is the invitation right now to practice self-agency and to support homeostasis in our own bodies, in our own homes. And through that, we affect the balance within our world. Because the more that that fear spreads, you guys, I mean, that's spreading a lot faster than, than the virus. That is spreading really fast. And we need to look at how can we all promote a state of calmness in this time of, of panic. And that's ultimately the cage that's being rattled right now. Um, there is a belief that a lot of people hold that we've all held probably at some point in our life, um, that there is someone coming to save us all. Let me grab my mic. Tap, tap. Is this thing on? Uh, it's up to us. It's up to you. It's up to me. There is nobody coming to, to save us. In fact, even if you put all of your faith right now in the government creating a vaccine for you so that you don't contract this illness, this virus, it's going to take much longer than your demand for it. Estimates are, I was listening to an interview yesterday with an infectious disease researcher. Um, it could take two years before something like that hits the market. I'm glad you asked that. Somebody commented, isn't Jesus coming to save us all? Now, many of you know, I love Jesus. I believe in God. I was raised that way and I hold a lot of beliefs there. However, I am a huge advocate for owning what you can. There is a fine line between just putting your hands up in the air and, and saying that, Someone, no matter who you put your trust and faith in, whether it's your doctor, your government, your God, whoever, that somebody is going to come and save you and that there isn't a level of personal responsibility that can be taken. You will see this, um, I mean, silly example, but true. You will see people say, I'm going to McDonald's every day to eat my food, but I bless my food before I eat it. Therefore, uh, this, new, this is going to turn into nutrition into my body. That is not how it works. You have to take a certain level of ownership and responsibility with what you can. And see, these are beliefs that are being challenged right now. These are, because at the end of the day, this is, what we're, this is what's being rattled. We're all coming up against this, like, wait a second. What have I been thinking this whole time? Who have I been putting my my trust in if outside of my own ability to impact what happens next. This is the cage that's being rattled for so many, okay? This is for sure, I mean, I, I have hypothesized that this is the barrier that most people face when starting with doTERRA, for example. Yes, this is multi-layered. There, there, there is a root within all of this. As you peel the onion, you're like, oh, this is what's happening, right? Um, I hypothesize a lot of people do not start with doTERRA, for example. There are many other, you know, lifestyle examples like this. But I, I, I would guess that what the barrier is for a lot of people is that this whole lifestyle suggests more ownership. It suggests outsourcing your power less. I mean, I was ripe for that when I started with doTERRA seven years ago. Actually, the marketing at that time was be ready for anything. How many of you remember that, that marketing? Maybe you started around the same time that I did and I ate that up. I loved that idea. And it turned out to be the truest marketing that I had ever experienced. Be ready for anything. 
But even in times like this, many people struggle with this idea. They've gone their whole life believing that something out there is going to make everything right again. And this transition towards self-agency and this personal health responsibility can be tough. But here's what I want you to understand. This is your invitation to do this. Little by little, grow that trust with yourself. Okay, now let's, let's, let's get into the meat of this. We are dealing right now with a virus. Yes, fear is a virus, but we are dealing with an actual virus that is doubling with each day. And the truth is, it's looking for a host. It's looking for hosts. It's looking for people that are very busy and stressed. It's looking for people that are inflamed. It's looking for the immune compromised. It's looking for the anxious, the drugged, and the toxic loaded. It's looking for people that are unprepared and filled with fear. That is what makes you a good host for this virus. So our most important question right now, and that's why I titled this broadcast and accompanying blog, how to not be a good host, is am I a good host? That's the question we all need to be asking. Am I the host that this virus is looking for? Or better yet, how can I take ownership and live as though no one is coming to save me and fix everything for me? And there is something we all can do. Even if, as I name those things off, even if you, know, you check off the box for three of those eight things that I said might make you a good host, there is at least one thing I'm gonna share with you right now that you can do to make yourself not as good a host, okay? So let's go into some practical. How do we stay strong and confident through this time? If you, you know, if you have a feeling that the system you've subscribed to prior now isn't working, let's look at what a new system could look like. What could a new way of being for you? This moment in time, like I've said already, offers us a great opportunity to upgrade the way we are taking care of ourselves and our family and, and each other. Because how we do that ultimately takes care of the whole, okay? So I wanna, I wanna give you like 10 or 11 very practical things. These are all going to be on the blog that I share with you at the end, okay? Number one, very practical tip that we all can do. Slow down. Release that pressure valve in your calendar. And, and guys, this is really tough for me. Uh, you probably know I'm a planner. I'm the biggest fan you know of the color-coded Google Calendar, okay? Uh, I'm a maximizer, it's my, one of my top strengths, which means I like to squeeze every drop out of every minute. Ask my husband, where is he? Um, like, I'm like, oh, I just don't wanna leave anything on the table in my life. I wanna just like squeeze it all. And this is my work within this time, is to learn to slow down, to be home with my crew, to enjoy more cooking and creating and crafting and playing and laughing. Like that is, that is a very practical thing each of us can tune into to, to integrate. Tip number two, stay home. It's one of the greatest things you could do, not only for yourself, but for us all, especially if you're not feeling so great. You are gonna be given grace right now. If there are meetings, if there are events and conferences, for example, like the one I shared was, was canceled for us, everyone needs to be showing each other grace through this time um, because it's actually the most responsible thing you could do is to not go, to not show up to the meeting, to not go to the concert if it hasn't been canceled yet on your behalf already. Um, Take this time to, to look at how you can change up some things in your home. How, uh, you know, maybe reading more books, maybe um, playing more board games. I've been saying to, to Chris, like we were just getting into uh, season whatever, eight of Homeland. I said, you know, let's switch this up. We literally just finished watching Narcos. I'm like, we, we gotta like work in some more laughter here. So 
I'm, I'm making playlists, saving more Jim Gaffigan and Ricky Gervais and Schitt's Creek and, you know, like bringing in more of uh, more laughter, not so much serious, scary drug lording. I mean, pandemic is like on the top 10 list of Netflix right now. Like what in the world, right? Don't be watching that right now or ever. Um, listen to calming music in your home. Like now is the time to really look at how can I dial up the feelings of peace in my home? Tip number three, it's time to prepare some DIY plant creations for extra protection throughout the day so that you, so that you have what you need. If something, you know, continue, if you can't get access to what you need. Now I'm going to share like four recipes with you. Again, these are all going to be in the blog, so you don't need to take notes. Number one, an effective DIY hand sanitizer. According to the CDC, it needs to have at least 60% alcohol, which means that's not 60% on the bottle. That means the ratio of what's in your concoction needs to be at least 60%. So this recipe I'm gonna give you is going to create a 66% alcohol volume. You need to be using the 91% isopropyl or ethyl alcohol. Um, I have seen a lot of recipes with Everclear vodka since, because um, I believe it's, uh, we actually have a bottle here. Chris just went out and got this morning. I think it's 100, and some, 100 something proof. I'm not sure of the effectiveness of that, you guys. If you have the rubbing alcohol, that's the ideal. Here's how you make it. In a 30 ml bottle, like the one that doTERRA's uh, sanitizing mist comes in. You're going to use four teaspoons of rubbing alcohol, one teaspoon of fractionated coconut oil, and between 20 to 30 drops of On Guard. Okay, that's going to work out the right ratio so that you end up with at least a 60% alcohol. Now I have a tip for you that's kind of fun. How many of you have a ton of empty 15 ml bottles laying around? This is a great time for you to fill them up and share them with your people. So here's what you're gonna do. After you give it a little clean up, you can clean the insides, you can remove the label if you want and use a little lemon to get rid of the adhesive. Um, what you're going to do is you're gonna cut that ratio down to fit this 15 ml bottle, okay? So the, the proportions for that, let me just go to my notes to make sure I give you the right ones, would be one and a half tablespoons of rubbing alcohol to half a tablespoon of fractionated coconut oil and then 10 to 15 drops of your On Guard. Now you need to buy a spray cap. You can get these on Amazon from a lot of different essential oil supply stores. Uh, you can add a spray top to right to the 15 mLs, okay? And then you could use all of your empties to, to make up sanitizers for your friends and family and community, okay? So that's a good little tip, great way to recycle your empty bottles. Recipe number two is a foaming hand soap. So this is super easy to make, especially if uh, some of you maybe don't have the On Guard foaming soap. This is a great, simple DIY. So you'll wanna keep these at every bathroom in your home. Again, what you're looking to do is to naturally and simply support your immune system throughout the day in, in little increments by not using some sort of hand wash that's totally wiping your hands clean of all good bacteria, um, something that would have like triclosan in it would do that, right? Here's how you make it. Two tablespoons of unscented liquid castor soap, one tablespoon of fractionated coconut oil, and 10 drops each of peppermint and On Guard. That's my favorite combination. I make it all the time. Um, you can even make a little travel soap pump. You can buy the travel soap pumps. I'll have that linked on the blog for you. Yeah, I realize Facebook's no good. I have it still running, but I'll save the Instagram video to upload, okay? Um, recipe number three is an immune support roller bottle. Now you could use the On Guard roller bottle, no problem. But if you don't have that, take a 10 mil roller bottle. That's what almost all roller bottles are. Take, the, take an empty, add 20, 20 drops of On Guard and 10 drops of frankincense, top it up with fra fractionated coconut oil, and there you go. Roll and massage that on your neck and chest, morning and night, if you're going to be out. I'm not saying you need to use this every single day, okay? I'm saying if you believe you're gonna be around people, um, if you are feeling run down, then you'll wanna be doing that for sure. Um, and of course, you could use the On Guard roller bottle, nice and simple. 
Uh, for the kids, you guys, if you're making a 10 ml, then you're gonna cut those drops down to at least half. So you'd be doing a total of 10 to 15 drops of essential oil topped up with your coconut oil. The last recipe I wanted to give you in, in this four part is an immune support all-purpose cleaner. Again, super easy to make. You wanna be thinking about what you're using if you uh, are the one that cleans your home. I'm assuming most of you are. Uh, so really easy. You're gonna fill a 16 ounce glass spray bottle or you can use an empty sparkling bottle with two tablespoons of the On Guard cleaning concentrate, 10 drops of On Guard, 10 drops of peppermint, top it up with water. That's the super simple route. If you don't have cleaning concentrate, then you could substitute a quarter cup of rubbing alcohol or one cup of vinegar, and then add your water and your oils, okay? Now those are four recipes I thought very important to share with you within this content. If you are a DIY fan, I just released the Supernatural Recipe Guide. It has over 180 of the best DIY recipes. So you can hop over to wholefit.com forward slash supernatural if you wanna check that out. But let's keep going. Tip number four is sleep. Look at how you can support yourself in sleeping longer and deeper right now. Buy yourself a pretty silk eye uh, pillowcase and eye mask. Buy yourself something that's going to get you excited about focusing on your sleep right now because that's when your body is doing its healing. That sleep is really important. I am so into sleep right now. Um, it's, it's just something that I put on the back burner for most of my 20s and 30s and I just, I'm obsessed with looking at ways to increase my deep sleep. Massage vetiver oil into your feet each night. Put a couple drops of Serenity Blend in your diffuser. Create a routine, you guys. Something that's gonna support you in sleeping deeper. Have a routine with your kids. You know, even last night I was, I was tucking Chloe in. I grabbed a bottle of Serenity. I put a drop on my finger and I just massaged it into the back of her earlobes, put a little bit on her forehead, massaged her feet while we talked about our day. Uh, one other thing I like to do with the kids is I'll let them just choose whatever their favorite uh, kids roller bottle is right now, whatever their heart's needing. And I'll use that to just work into their body as we do our wind down routine. Number five is being extra vigilant about what you are touching. So this is the biggest, you know, when it comes to transmission, this is what we all need to be very aware of is when we're out in public, we need to be really mindful of what we're touching. And, and if it we're touching our face or our nose or eyes or ears, that's how this is being transmitted. So when you see people wearing surgical masks, you guys, it's not that that's protecting them from what they're breathing in because it's actually not effective for that reason. It's so that they don't touch their face. So you may, you know, if you are traveling, if you're going to be around people, you might want to consider putting one on for that reason. If you find you're constantly touching your, your eyes, your nose, your ears, your mouth, okay? Um, when I used to manage a district of Starbucks stores, all of my stores knew that one of my number one things was you better have a garbage can near the bathroom door. We need to encourage people. And this was like 15 years ago. I was hammering on about this. Proper hand washing is so important. You cannot wash your hands and then open the bathroom door. You need to have a little towel with you. And I know a lot of bathrooms have moved towards the air blowers to save the environment. That's questionable. That's actually happening. Uh, but we've also now created a situation where people are washing their hands and then they're touching the door where other people may not have washed their hands. So maybe you wanna keep a little towel in your bag in case you're in bathrooms where they do not have paper towels. Always flush the toilet with your foot. That's a hot tip. Make sure you flush the toilet with your foot. Do not touch <laughs> that. I'm like mama bearing you guys right now, but these are all really important things. Gone are the days, you guys, of public handshakes. And I'm glad, I think that's gross. Truthfully, I always gave the firmest handshake ever to try to discourage somebody from ever shaking my hand again. <laughs> Elbow drop, fist bump, whatever. Do whatever you need to do so you're not touching hands, okay? Also, review with your kids proper hand washing. 20 seconds of soap and water up the arms. Have them sing happy birthday or some song that gets them washing their hands for 20 seconds, okay? Tip number six are supplements. So if you are interested in taking supplements that could really support your immune system right now, you're looking at 
vitamin D. You can get the drops that are a vitamin D K2 blend, or you can get some, if you're somewhere where the sun is shining, get some natural sunlight on your skin without sunblock for 20 minutes a day. Even better if you can get a little sunshine on your skin while you're out near the water or the trees. I'll, I'll come back to that point again when I talk about movement every day. Um, lipospheric vitamin C, or some sort of bioavailable vitamin C is important right now. Again, I'll link these up in the blog post. doTERRA, lifelong vitality, the PB Assist probiotic, and the DDR Prime soft gels would be my recommendation of daily supplements right now, okay? Nutrition, let's talk about this. Point number seven, nutrition is by far the most impactful of these and within your control. Um, focus more on whole foods, less packaged, especially if we may be finding ourselves in a situation where we're needing to rely on more packaged foods in the coming weeks. Right now is your time to really just nourish your body and your cells with as much whole foods as possible. Less packaged, low, low to no sugar, okay? Stock up on freezer fruits and veggies. Prep homemade chicken soup. This is a good time to be doing some meal prep. Good chicken soup with the good broth store it in the freezer. Uh, look at integrating even a daily smoothie, something that packs a good nutritional punch. Add a few cups of organic greens to it, a cup of um, something with vitamin C in it, something like pineapple or your favorite frozen fruit, whatever that is, a teaspoon of chia seeds and some collagen powder. You can even make up little bags uh, for your freezer for quick smoothies each day. And as you're cooking, you guys, you're looking at integrating uh, more immune protective herbs and veggies. So things like oregano, thyme, marjoram, garlic, onion, right? Cannot go wrong there. You wanna really, again, give your body the tools that it needs right now. Tip number eight, stay hydrated. Drink your body weight in ounces of water daily. Forget the eight cups a day. Look at how you can support your body with enough hydration to filter things out properly. Add two drops of lemon or tangerine or grapefruit essential oil to your water to increase the limonene that you're providing your body. You might also want to add uh, a serving of chlorophyll. It's pretty tasteless, it tastes a little bit green, um, but you could even, again, with, when you're adding your citrus oils for the limonene, it'll help cut a little bit of that green. Um, and you know, PS, I see a lot of just memes and jokes going around right now. I see a lot of people saying, what are you stocking up on? And all their friends are saying wine. You know, if you have friends stocking up on wine right now, they're simply telling you about how they're preparing to be a host. That's it. This is not the time to be drinking alcohol, guys. Like, maybe this is your time to look at how you can move away from that, okay? Keep your body moving is my ninth tip. Get fresh air each day, keep it simple. Um, I would actually discourage intense workouts. Anything that's intensely tearing down your muscle would not be wise right now because that is a form of stress. So this is a good time for you to be going for walks, light jogs. This is a good time to roll out your yoga mat. Um, even companies like Down Dog Yoga, their app is free right now. They've made it free so that you can do classes, I think until April 1st for free. So um, add a drop of peppermint to your temples and chest before you move to encourage you to, to get moving. Um, tip number 10, I'm almost done. Engage your lungs. So look at how you can more intentionally increase oxygen into your body. So I'm gonna link for you in the blog three breathing practices you can try that are gonna help expand and have deeper breathing. Of course, adding a drop of Breathe Blend or Eucalyptus to your hand before you do these exercises would be really smart, gonna help open up the respiratory system. My last tip to you is prep some things to take inventory of to make sure that you are prepared should you need to spend four to six weeks in the house, you guys. I mean, this may seem absurd to you right now, especially if you're holding strong to one of those theories that I talked about at the start. But if the community spread continues to double each day as it has, there are going to be many closures. There will be many of your favorite stores closing down for operation because they do not have enough healthy employees to work. And of course we always have the online option, but what you'll obviously see during this time is supply and demand in effect. So you're going to see all those things you rely on are going to go up in price. 
So right now is the time to be smart and to be prepared. And um, your question right now is, if I had to stay in my house for two months, would I be okay? Do I have enough to support my family through their health? That's, that's the leading question within this last point. So I wanna give you a quick checklist of things you wanna be thinking of. These are, of course, things on my checklist. I'm, I'm showing up for you today. I've written this blog for you because this is all on my heart for our family for my friends, for, you know, I'm sharing this with you because I want you to be smart right now and don't, you know, knuck, white knuckle grip a theory about what you think is happening because things are evolving very quickly, okay? So here are some things you wanna make sure you have in stock in your home. Water. If you don't have access to filtered water in your home, now is the time to buy a Brita pitcher, for example, something that's going to filter your water. Buy some sparkling water, buy some coconut water, something a natural form of electrolytes should you need it. Toilet paper, <laughs> I had to go there. Uh, it's basically out of stock everywhere. My mom told me this morning that the Costco in her city had a three hour lineup of people waiting for the toilet paper to get unloaded off the trucks. This is happening, we're already in it. You're gonna be paying more for toilet paper. But I did wanna give you another option, uh, something that I recently just purchased is a, a bidet. So I just purchased two of the Tushy Bidets is the brand um, I've, I'm gonna link up for you on the blog. They're kind of cute, um, super easy to install, and then you won't need to use toilet paper, okay? So maybe that's just a simple way you're taking the upgrade right now. Frozen fruits and vegetables, okay? Again, you wanna focus on what do I need in case I can't get to the store for a week or two? So frozen, you wanna fill your freezer with some freezer meals, you wanna focus on fruits and veggies. Um, you can go to wholefit.com forward slash recipes if you wanna find all of my favorite recipes there, a lot of like slow cooker crock pot type of recipes that you could prep ahead of time. A lot of um, crock pot recipes, for example, you can store in a freezer bag without the liquids so that the day you wanna make the meal, you just add the liquids from the recipe. Um, canned or bulk legumes, beans, lentils, canned fruits, canned veggies. I mean, time to stock the pantry, right? You wanna be thinking of what are things that I could, you know, very quickly construct a meal out of if I don't have access to the fresh version. Nut and seed milks, go get cartons or a case of cartons of nut milks, okay? They're not gonna go bad. They'll, you can keep them in your pantry for at least six to nine months. Um, full fat coconut milk, really smart because it's just super nourishing, full of the good fats and you can use it in a lot of dishes. Uh, dry pastas, I love, for example, Annie's Organic Mac and Cheese for the girls. I will often construct a super quick meal for them and me. And me. Uh, I'll just mix a box of Annie's with a box of chickpea or a can of chickpeas or black beans and I'll stir in some green peas or frozen broccoli, voila. Dinner's done in 10 minutes. Um, steel cut oats, nuts and nut butters. Again, these are all things that are going to be nutrient dense, okay? Uh, seed or high fiber crackers. You guys are welcome, I'm glad you're here. Um, like Mary's brand crackers, stock up on those. Cheeses, and then if you have a pet, dog food. You gotta be thinking of like, okay, okay how much inventory do I have if I had to be inside for the next month, right? dog food, and then have some sort of a kit for batteries, candles, flashlights, and an, perhaps an extra container of uh, gas for your car. The other thing, the other category I know a lot of you are interested in right now, um, essential oils. So uh, what's been really great to see is doTERRA is the largest essential oil company in the world, right? Um, this is the kind of time where if doTERRA was a low-hanging fruit kind of company, we could obviously position ourselves as very much a solution during a time like this, but we aren't because we've always been about lifestyle. And I know so many of you are sharing the power of a healthy lifestyle with your communities, not positioning the oils as a cure, okay? That's really important. Absolutely open up and share with people what you're doing right now to support a stronger immune system. Here are seven essential oils that I think would be really smart to make sure you have in your home right now. I am not at liberty to share the research on why, but you're, so you're gonna need to do that on your own time. 
or you can just trust me. Um, P.S. Friends, I, I think a lot of you here understand, you know, the distinction between doTERRA and other essential oil companies. This is not the time to be playing around with imposter brands. You need to make sure what you're using is what the bottle says is in there. And you can trust that with doTERRA. They're the real deal. That's, I say that as the disclaimer, as I share the seven essential oils you want to make sure you have in your home right now. On guard, you guys, every day, like I said, we're getting alerts from doTERRA. They're putting caps on things. If you don't have on guard in your home, even just the straight up oil, get a bottle. Make sure you have at least one bottle. It's, it's such protective immune support. Um, you can buy it in roller bottle form. It obviously comes in a lot of different products, but many of them are sold out right now. Oil number two is DDR Prime. Healthy cell creator and healthy ad, ad Poptosis, cell death in the body, that's important. It also comes as a soft gel, which I mentioned would be one to be taking daily. If you want to use DDR Prime with your kids, make them a roller bottle with 10 drops of DDR Prime, top it up with fractionated coconut oil. Rose, doTERRA has Rose as a roller bottle. That's probably the version that you'd be purchasing because a five ML bottle is over $300. Rose is the queen. She's very protective in times like this. And, and so what I would be looking at doing is massaging that diluted rose into your chest. It's beautiful for skin, even just breathing it in. Copaiba, oil number four. It engages so many immune receptors within the endocannabinoid system. So, that, so copaiba is, if you think of copaiba as, it's like a booster. Okay, it's what's going to boost the body, but it's also going to help boost the effectiveness of everything else you're doing, of many other essential oils, because it actually interacts with so much of your body system, of your endocannabinoid system. Oregano, oh, so copaiba, guys, what I would suggest is a drop under your tongue each morning, or you could take a soft gel. It comes um, in a soft gel as well, which has two or three drops, I believe, in the soft gel. Uh, oil number five is the oregano roller bottle. It's, it's a powerhouse. It's not one that you would be using every day, but you certainly would want to look at it if you feel like, uh, uh oh, you know? So uh, use it on your feet at night, is what I suggest. And then, you know, massage it into your feet and put socks on. You're going to smell like spaghetti sauce. You're going to have to deal with that, um, which is why I recommend it at night when your body is regenerating and healing. And it's a caustic oil, it's hotter on the skin, which is why I recommend the feet. Eucalyptus is oil number six. It's a powerhouse for the respiratory system. Now it's in our breathe blend or it's called easy air in Canada, um, but it's going to support lung expansion, deeper breathing. So massage a drop, what I love to do, I'll take a little bit of coconut oil in my hand, one to two drops of eucalyptus, and then I'll massage it into my chest and I'll do a breathing tent like this, where you just pull your shirt up over your nose and then um, you breathe it in for three to five deep breaths. Last oil is, anyone guess? I know I, I didn't ask early enough and there's a delay, so I'm gonna just continue on, but the last oil is frankincense. The king, he's the king. The patriarchal oil, okay? If Rose is the matriarch, Frank is the patriarch. And Frank, you'll want to add a drop under your tongue every night before bed, add a drop to your moisturizer on your face and chest, you can purchase it straight as the oil. I know a lot of you have it or as a diluted roller bottle. Those would be my seven, okay? So I shared this post with you guys, the, this blog, this video, um, as I was taking inventory of our own preparedness. I, I find I am most calm and peaceful and in my power when I feel prepared. Top the screen if you relate to that. I, I don't like a feeling of not... Uh, knowing our plan of not knowing how we're responding and, and I'm always looking in my life at where I can take more ownership where am I outsourcing too much of my power and how can I come back to a state of power and so I want to end on this most important note there is so much in your control even in a time like this, when everyone around you is spinning, every time you turn on Facebook, there's a million perspectives and opinions and theories. Even in a time like this, there is so much that's in your control. Peace within your home. White space within your calendar. 
will turn out to be your most effective strategy right now. And anytime you're feeling that, that overwhelm and that fear creep in, I want you to repeat yourself, repeat this to yourself. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. What I do here for me within our home, I do for the whole. So every little thing, even if that list of 10 or 11 things I just gave you, if you can only do one thing, remember that. Even just one thing affects us all. So thank you if you can even do one of those things. That is enough. If you can do more, great. If you can do them all, fantastic. You will not be a good host. No fear, love bugs, seriously, okay? This is not the time to let that overwhelm you. Stay safe, stay informed in a sensible way. Don't let that consume you. Use your adaptive system when you need to. I took a capsule last night. I was breathing in my adaptive blend yesterday. I was feeling it. But it turns out what I needed most was to be able to just put my thoughts to paper and have a plan and share them with you. We'll get through this. We're gonna get through this. So, you know, take care of yourself and each other. We're unfortunately in a time where a lot of people are acting very selfishly. Whether we're talking about people hoarding toilet paper, so there's not enough for the community, or people sharing their theories with such conviction that they're actually causing people to not be prepared. That's selfish. Check your theories. Be prepared. Look at where you can be part of the solution here and take responsibility. Take this as an opportunity to look at where in your life you can make some upgrades and be ready for anything. Because you know what? That's going to repel the virus more than any $30 bottle of rubbing alcohol ever could. The invitation is here for us all, you guys. This is an invitation to look at the systems that we've been subscribing to, to look at where we can take more of that ownership and to understand there is nobody, there's nobody coming to save us right now. It's up to each of us to, to do our part for the whole. The double irony of, uh, me preparing a workshop on living life by design and not being able to serve it up was that I didn't realize that in this week now that we would all truly have the opportunity to actually live that, live the principles of that. And everything I've shared with you here is truly what it means to live by design, to take that ownership. We all have that opportunity. A few helpful resources as I end. Um, number one, I'm going to be teaching as it, as the calendar stands, my plan as of, I, I planned this a month ago to be teaching an essential oil and wellness class, March 24th at 2 PM, all about the immune system. This was before all of this started. I had it in the books, um, because I've shared much of the heart of that within this talk, I'm going to keep that class strictly to recipes that you can do to support your immune system. So if you want to join me for that, go to wholefit.com forward slash classroom. I've already mentioned that I have a new ebook out called the Supernatural Recipe Guide. It's over 180 of the recipes I've made over the last seven years that actually work. So if you want to check that out, it's at .com forward slash supernatural. Um, and if I can help you with oils, you know where to find me for that, right? You can go to .com forward slash oils. Any uh, questions or thoughts before we end off? We've got three more minutes together. <clears throat> Anything you want to add, babe? Kind of what? Huh? What was that? Anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, Eastern time. <clears throat> I'll upload this video to YouTube. Uh, Facebook kind of, excuse me. <clears throat> Facebook kind of crapped out on me, so I'll get rid of that audio. I'll upload this one. 
um, to YouTube. I'll save it to the Facebook page and I'll strip the audio, put this into a podcast once, once I edit out a little bit of the flubbing around at the beginning. Um, but I'll take, we just have a couple of minutes. What's my feeling on witch hazel? So witch hazel is often used as a preservative in the sprays. Anything you're adding water to will grow bacteria. So you'll often see it in things like linen sprays, but it's also being shown in a lot of sanitizers. Now, what's really important right now, you guys, is that we look at what research we have. We just don't have the research on witch hazel being effective at a time like this, which is why I was paying attention to what the CDC was saying. So of course you could make your sanitizers with coconut oil and on guard. Of course you could make them with, with witch hazel or vodka. But what the CDC has released is that in order for a, a homemade sanitizer to actually be effective right now, it needs to have at least a 60% volume. So obviously you can make whatever you want, but you do want to be sure what you're making is working. And I say that with a big disclaimer, washing your hands for 20 seconds is always going to be a much better option than using a sanitizer. So just, you know, you can have confidence in it, but if you can wash your hands, wash your hands. Sarah, girl, I'm so bummed too. I'm so bummed. We, we had our lunch plans. I had t-shirts made. I mean, we'll figure something out. Uh, what are your thoughts on sending kids to school? Prediction. The schools are going to shut down after March break. Uh, I just think like we're just at the cusp of this right now and we're already seeing what's happening, right? So uh, a lot of school, my, my kids are part of the Waldorf education. They're, uh, they have a two-week March break, which is on this week and next. So uh, the public school gets out next week. I anticipate them announcing a longer block of time at home. So parents, you know, what that also means in being prepared is that you work with your community, your family, your support to see where you can get some extra help with that because I know a lot of you do need to go into work, right? You need to still pay the bills and that's going to cause a lot of issues there. So you wanna, again, you wanna look at what what if, right? That's what you're thinking right now. What's my plan if we had to be home for a month? Hey, I'll just share the blog with you, you guys. Uh, I'm gonna upload this video to it before we end off wholefit.com forward slash blog forward slash how to not be a host. How's that for a non SEO optimized title? Wholefit.com forward slash blog forward slash how to not be a host. It's up and live. You can see all the recipes that I just shared with you. The only thing it's waiting on is uh, this video. Okay. Hey, Colleen, what do you think about travel outside of Canada? I, w I wouldn't. Uh, so we're going to be facing that issue. <clears throat> um, I think that countries are all going to be shutting down their borders. I think what Trump announced yesterday with uh, preventing, what was it, Europe? Europe can't travel in. So people are traveling back to Europe right now out of the US, but I think we're gonna see that happen with all countries. Because we also know this about Trump, he's very protective of his country, which I admire. Uh, so we will see more of that happen. Just again, my prediction, but based on what's already happening. All right, let's end this here, you guys. I just, I hope that through this time together today, you feel a little more hope in the options that you have. Um, my, my call out right now is to not grip too tightly to any theory about what's happening and to be prepared because through that preparation and through being smart at a time like this and doing what you can, you will find you feel more calm, you feel more confident, you feel more in control. Don't pay attention to people who are spinning out of control. Pay attention to the people who are prepared and what they're doing and look at what you can do for yourself as well because what you do for yourself, you do for us all. So thank you.